Hey, hey, everybody. This is uh, the High Red Geek podcast, episode number 13 with Selena Rodriguez, otherwise known as Selenity, uh, from her Twitch streaming channel. Um, so it was really cool to have her on. Uh, I've just been a fan of hers for a while now. And uh, just to talk more about her journey, um, she primarily streams here. This is the Storm, which is one of my uh, more recent favorite games. Um, and I was just super excited to talk with her. I felt like I talked a lot just because I was a little bit nervous, but uh, nevertheless, still a great episode that features kind of uh, a lot of good wisdom about building uh, positive communities online uh, and just kind of really uh, connecting with the themes that I want to uh, highlight for this show. So really appreciate Selena's time. Uh, definitely go check out her channel. And uh, after this brief message from our sponsor, this is episode number 13 with Selena Rodriguez. It's an honor to have our good friends at Swiftkick be a sponsor of the podcast because I've seen their work firsthand and it's truly unlike any student leadership training I've experienced. They've been voted best student leadership program unprecedented five times, so you know they must be doing something right. As a bonus for our listeners, Swiftkick is giving a $500 discount off their normal speaking fee if you mention High Red Geek when you contact them. I highly recommend their trainings for your campus as your students will be talking about it for months afterwards. It's really great stuff. Check them out, swiftkickhq.com to learn more and let them know I sent you. Now, back to the show. Yeah, like playing Heroes of the Storm, my brother turned me on to it. And then when I was seeing like the twitch partners who are you know streaming that game and stuff like you were sort of like my gateway drug into twitch like i just always knew what it was (laughs) and i was just like yeah just like oh man like this whole other like world of the geek community of just like because i guess i didn't realize how big it was like i always knew what was there but yeah it's yeah it's just uh yeah it's giant yeah because i tend to i guess i tend to dabble like i sort of like dip my feet into like read it and be like okay i get it. i get what that is or just like dip my feet into different things just so i can kind of appreciate why people love what they love so much and kind of sort of get the appeal and stuff but yeah twitch is just really incredible so i'll be interested to hear a little bit more about your uh journey with that because i guess you you just kind of have like your third year of streaming right yeah it's coming up three year anniversary very cool um all right so we'll go ahead and get started so um, yeah, I really appreciate you taking time to hang out uh, for the podcast here, Selena, um, or some people might know you, Selenity. Um, but yes, yeah, so you're kind of now you've recently fully uh, committed to Twitch streaming. So I'm very curious, I guess, a little bit about you know your professional journey, those decision points with deciding to stream in the first place, and just you know furthering your kind of investment into it but if you just want to start out here giving an introduction of who you are and how you got to be where you are today sure so my name is selena uh i am a graduate of ut austin the university of texas at austin where i studied psychology and criminology um i've always been into video games though so that kind of was a trend throughout everything and was always kind of my hobby Uh, and then after college when i went and started working in the real world um, I found that there were not a lot of other people that gamed as much as I thought there were in college. Uh, so I ne- wanted to surround myself with more of a community with similar interests as myself. I started watching Twitch. Uh, it's basically a channel full of people playing video games and communities built around them. Um, and slowly but surely, I started doing it as a hobby, and it kind of has exploded into where it is now. Yeah, because um, that's what I think, yeah, when I... Um specifically when I went to graduate school, like for whatever reason, I like deliberately pushed away like gaming out of my life. I'm just like, I don't have time for this anymore. But like, it just came back because it's just like, it's like you said, like it's a way that I've built community just easily just, you know, have fun. It's a way to relax and all that. So it's like, yeah, if you sort of like went out into the quote unquote real world and I don't know if other people were doing the similar thing where I'm just like, Oh, I'm a a full-time working adult. I don't have time for that. But it's just like, if you like have gained, yeah, like for your entire life, it's going to come back eventually in some capacity. It's so interesting. A lot of people watch TV and I used to also, I used to watch a lot of Netflix. Um, I don't watch any TV now at all, but it's interesting when people, they kind of classify you as, Oh, you're a gamer. It's like, well, I do enjoy like adventure games when I have free time to relax. Like, are you a TV watcher? Like, why are there categories? It's so strange. Right. Um, but yeah, you, I found that a lot of people associated games with kind of like not enough time, but 
that's kind of silly. There's a lot of portable games too and, and games on your phone. It's really just another way for you to pass the time and also for you to kind of relax or find enjoyment like reading a book. There's really good plot lines in a lot of games too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I did not realize that like when I was younger, I played a lot of like role-playing games and story-driven games. And I think it like, like it helped me build my vocabulary or just appreciate yeah. these stories <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I think we'll get to, we'll get to that a little bit later of like those ways that it does positively contribute. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So it is, that's like a good point though, too, is that people, I think can almost like mindlessly make time for other things like television, you know, these things that are so ubiquitous and just like very much kind of force fed to us or, you know, really put in front of us. So I think, yeah, there's so much that can be beneficial to gaming, especially doing it now online and building communities and connections and just, you know, like having fun or building skills or, you know, appreciating a good story. So I think, yeah, we don't have to box ourselves off. It's like, because I think I've always just had a really big appreciation for TV and film and stuff like that. So that's always going to be a part of it. But there's been times where, yeah, I've like mindlessly devoted myself to a show and I'm like, I don't enjoy this anymore. Just this like <laughs> yeah. sunken cost. I've been watching it for like six seasons and it's like, yeah, well, I guess I just have to keep going. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You've kind of like, you know, intentionally built sort of like, okay, how do I want to spend my time and sort of uh, build bonds and connections with people? Because I know some of the, the past people that I've had on, you know, they've built some of their uh, strongest connections and friendships and relationships, whether they're just like ongoing for a long period of time or uh, you know, just very deep connections through gaming and stuff. So, um, and I guess just so I can for kind of due diligence. So, you know, you went to college and, you know, I think that certainly is an environment where I think people are still kind of like nurturing their hobbies. You know, they maybe have more free time than they would afterwards and stuff. So I guess, you know, is there anything about your, your college experience before we kind of move on to where you are now um, and your current work, like anything that happened during college or like what you're involved with or the skills that you developed, you know, you know, that really did contribute to you in a positive way, you know, personally or professionally? Sure. So my college experience was a fantastic one. I mean, of course, there's hardships in college, but it, it really just helped me grow as a character. Whether or not you need that degree afterwards is up to you and what profession you pursue but I think the college experience and the college degree it goes much further so I learned work ethic in late high school that brought me to an easygoing college experience I remember the first year of college I had a 4.0 because mm -hmm. I was just so used to the workload whereas all of my other you know um, colleagues I guess students were struggling to try to manage life and it's just it's hard but you learn how to time managed. So I was able to have a social life. I was able to also get A's. I was able to study and go to parties and, you know, kind of live the best college life I could trying to figure out. And of course, you're also doing all those things while having hormones and emotions and maturing <laughs> happening. It's all kinds of craziness, but it honestly helped me to become a better person. I was able to sit with ambiguity when I decided not to go to grad school. That was a decision I made with a couple professors because I thought you just kind of had to go to grad school and I didn't know what I wanted to do per se and I didn't want to go and pay money and do something I hated. Uh, and a lot of my professors told me you need to sit with ambiguity, like you need to be okay sitting with not knowing what's going to happen and trust yourself that you will always fall on your feet. Mm -hmm. nothing, yeah. nothing can stop you. but you don't always know where you're going. And I I learned that junior year of college and it's something I have used in my life almost every day since. It was such a good lesson to learn. And also the time management, streaming and time managing your social life or, or family life or anything, that is a very big skill as long as multitasking. Right. And then personally, it just, it rounded me out as a person to being able to be open to so many new experiences and new people and new thoughts and new ideas and new learning and taking different courses that like uh, accounting, for instance, I took an accounting course. I do my own taxes. I do my own budgeting now because of it. I also took a philosophy course and it helped me be more uh, open-minded to different things going on in this world and not being so closed off. So I would say that all of that ties into kind of how my college experience has shaped me. Yeah. Well, as a higher ed person who works in this industry realm, I, that kind of warms my heart because I feel like you had like the ideal experience where you just like, because I think, yeah, a lot of times what I, I ascribe to is that like, because I think people can get stuck up on 
where you go and like what your major is but a lot of times it matters less about that just like that you go and that you are open to new experiences and that you uh learn and grow and all that so yeah like it matters less yeah. where you go just that you go because it's like people could have you know a completely similar experience at their local community college for just two years because it's like you know you're just really having to manage your academic life and all your other priorities on your own and uh you know make choices about what you're going to spend time on whether that's just you know staying in your comfort zone or not um so yeah that's really awesome yeah that you just really have that full kind of because it's it's the environment for that to happen like it's it's a safe environment but there's opportunities to kind of like take risks and yeah like explore new areas and stuff so um yeah that's yeah, really awesome to hear absolutely yeah. i mean austin i live in austin texas and it's it's like a little hub in texas of like people that are from denver and from california and so that college was really really great it was the college i strived to to go to and i was very thankful that i had a good experience i mean of course there's also the other side of the coin but now i've been out of college for a few years now and so thinking back on it I, the, those bad parts just help the good parts grow and for jobs it's really not the degree they care more about it's that you committed to something for four years and that's what they really look at yeah and just yeah like how you speak about it because even then like further on in anybody's career it's like yeah you might make little pivots and stuff and it's like you're not ever going to be boxed in it just matters how you sort of have transferable or relatable skills and yeah just the ability to commit to things and see them through and um all that but yeah and that's a good point too just that like sitting with ambiguity because i think that's a big thing for a lot of people and it's really manifest in that example like you had of just like well i'll just go to grad school like that's what's next and it's that kind of specific thing is always knowing what that next thing is some people really have a hard time with that to where it's like okay i'm graduating from college then what's next it's just like well just the rest of your life and just kind of yeah you know, <laughs> it, you know that's obviously very scary to a lot of people just like it, it can be yeah. yeah so you have to kind of just like go where the wind takes you and yeah like trust yourself to you know make the right decisions and just put good energy out there and because i think yeah if you're continuing to be open to just learning new things seeing opportunities that come through and taking chances or just like talking with people if it's like oh you're doing kind of an interesting thing like how did you get to be where you want you know and like do that versus again i think people boxing themselves off it's like well i'm just this this major and that's the only thing i can ever do forever like and that's you know i'm kind of locked in it's like no yeah you have the opportunity to seek out whatever sort of speaks to you and just be comfortable with yeah trusting yourself and being comfortable with ambiguity i think that is a really good life lesson for all of us <laughs> um uh so I guess, you know, that all, you know, during your undergraduate college experience prepared you really well for venturing out into your kind of post-grad life. So, you know, you're kind of very much fully committing to streaming now. So I guess, you know, that's kind of more of your current work, I because I'm just curious, like, I guess talk me through kind of those decision points, I guess, as you're further investing in streaming and just kind of like, what kind of keeps you in inspired and motivated? Like, what do you enjoy most about this work that you've now kind of continually committed more to over the past couple of years? Yeah. So it started off, like I said, as a hobby. So my first job out of college, uh, I was a contractor at Facebook and they had a very big community there for rugby. So like everybody played rugby and if you didn't play rugby, then you did like some other thing. It was like only like four big umbrellas of hobbies that everybody gravitated mm -hmm. to. And it was strange I, none of them were gaming. <laughs> I would find a couple of random people that were into gaming or like had gamed in the past. So it was definitely weird. So I started streaming on Twitch just to like regain that connection that I had throughout all of college. Or I mean, I guess throughout all of my life because I was always playing video games, but there weren't a lot of people for me to talk to. I had my roommates and, and that was great and, you know, old friends as well. But, you know, you see you your coworkers all of the time. Uh, and I wanted to be able to share something with them. So I started streaming to get, I don't know, like another community to talk to. And then suddenly I was able to talk about something at Facebook that wasn't rugby related or other things. And I wanted to connect with those people. I really did. I even went to a couple of rugby matches, tried to like figure out what this sport was. Um, and so it suddenly it was like, Oh, now I now I have something that I can like an icebreaker. Everybody loves icebreakers. And now I had something to talk about. And when I got home, I was excited to play games and experience these games with other people, even if it was like one or two other people. Um, 
So about half a year later, I'm an ambitious person and I wanted to see how far I could grow my channel just, just for, because. So I started investing more time into it and that meant so losing social time. So that was the hardest part of my first year of streaming was I made the decision to continue the investment. There's consequences to that. And some of the consequences are you don't get to see friends as often. Maybe your friends don't understand what you're doing or why you're doing it or why you're committing so much time to it. You start going out less and less. Maybe it's harder to see your family, things like that. So I was kind of juggling and trying to, again, time manage what I wanted for myself. Um, about a couple years later, I don't even remember the timeline. I think it was, I think it was a year after that. Uh, I decided financially I could go full time with a part time job. So I, oh, it was about two years ago, I think. So yeah, a year after that, I found a job that worked around the hours of which I wanted to stream at, and. I left my full-time job and I decided to full-time stream. And I actually had talked to my, my parents about it too, because I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't making a terrible decision. But my dad basically said, you know, I was, I think, 23 at the time, something like that, maybe 24. And he was, he was like, you know, you're only young once. If you're financially able to do it, why not go for it? You can always go get another job afterwards. It's not going to be hard you know, he, he knew of my work ethic that it wouldn't be difficult, but that if I wanted to do full-time streaming, then I should go for it as long as I can always pay my bills. So I said, I'm going to do it. Uh, it was kind of scary because <laughs> it's just a whole nother world, but I had grown a community around my channel and I, I just wanted to, to keep growing it. And I think that's what I enjoy most about it is the amazing people I've met, the amazing people in my community, I just, every day I see them, they're so positive, they're so sweet, they're so nice. They care about one another. And these are people that I've never met before. These are people that we all just know each other by screen names. I mean, there's a couple of them that I have met in real life and I have made long-term friendship connections. And there's some that I remember their username from years ago. And if they pop back in the channel, we catch up on our past, you know, year or two that we've missed with each other. Um, and that's something I think that's what Twitch was meant for. And it was what I always wanted to achieve with Twitch. And I think I'm there now and I just want to keep seeing it grow. Yeah. Because, yeah, in, in that way, you can kind of get, yeah, because it's like direct connections with people and like you can kind of get the feedback loop of just like, because I know like, yeah, with your kind of further investment of it, you've kind of shifted around like your hours that you're doing things just to like reach people at different times and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I mean, you're, and it, that's always like a great way to, form a bond with somebody is just like just sharing like excitement about a thing that you both enjoy you know or it's just like hey like i play this game you play it too or you know you both really like it let's talk about that and then like from there you can sort of figure out other things where it's just like yeah i'm just getting to know you as a human being but it's always kind of easy to broach kind of building relationships whether kind of digitally or in person you know through those shared interests and stuff but um yeah i mean and i think it's just really cool because i think I'll, and I just I have two thoughts. So one thing on what you're saying, just like building a community of those like connections, whether they're somebody new or somebody that's been around for a while. Um, I think to your credit, what I appreciated when I uh, started watching your stream, just when I kind of was like, oh, I see this person that they're like showing in the, you know, the launcher um, for the game, like immediately, like you were just like sharing things very genuinely with people. And I think that's certainly to a lot of streamers success, I'd assume, like just being yourself, being open, you know, and making those connections with people and just like, wow, this is really cool. Like it's somebody who feels like a human being versus like, I mean, there's so many streamers now, so it's, you're going to have all sorts of people. So it's like, I've watched some other folks and you know, just, I'm just like, ah, okay. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really vibe with how they do things. Cause if it's like some people, it's like you're, you're playing a game and you know so much about it and you're almost being like pretentious about how people are playing or something. And it's just like, yes, I mean, yeah, I want to hear, you know, cause that's part of it. You know, you watch people who are good at stuff doing you know what they're good at and you want to kind of learn but it's, i don't know some people are just like you're coming across very pretentious right now i don't want to watch <laughs> you but yeah i just appreciate that you're very yeah you're very positive you have a very positive community you're very genuine and all that um and i think yeah it's been i'm sure a very you know scary journey just kind of like venturing out into the unknown with this but like you were saying like you're almost like 
starting your own business because like yeah you're like managing your money and like your taxes and just having to like figure out kind of the marketing and you know just like spreading the word or any of those sort of things so you know however long you do it and however it kind of persists for you you're certainly i would assume you know cultivating skills that could be useful for you you know in the future if it's something else or just as you continue to grow uh this community that you have so certainly i would uh, you know I would think that that would be kind of a way that it's kind of positively contributed to your life just that oh you know, for sure yeah, yeah there's um, a lot of great skills that yeah. i didn't even think i was gonna learn that i know now yeah very cool um so i know you uh you know primarily uh stream heroes of the storm which is a great game i enjoy it as well um so i guess you know maybe how you got into that game you know anything else that you're like geeking out about um just stuff that you want to mention you know we'll get to anything else you know uh that you want to kind of tip the hat to um that you're reading and watching and listening to but i guess you know sort of what, what are the things that you're consuming right now just that you're you're geeking out about and i know heroes of the storm obviously is probably one of the, the big ones that you're continually uh, enjoying <laughs> but yeah anything else that you might want yeah to for sure heroes of the storm um before that though i had played league of legends back in college that's why i gravitated to the type of game that heroes is mm -hmm. but i also played world of warcraft and i loved it so very very much um i've always loved blizzard games I've played all of them except StarCraft. I watched all of the StarCraft cinematics instead because that game is very difficult for me to play. Mm. But I love the lore a lot. So when Heroes came out, it was like, what? All of my universes colliding into one. And the game that I stopped playing because it was too time consuming is now back. And it was just, it was perfect. And I just loved it ever since. But other things I geek out about, I think the main thing is just Harry Potter in general. Love it. I've read the books like tons of times, the movies. There's even audiobooks with great voice actors playing all the parts. It's so good. It's like a timeless classic. I love it so much. Um, I don't know. I geek out about games in general. I geek out. About... Recently, I've been getting more and more into anime. Um, I really like the anime series Hunter x Hunter. It's so good. I'll geek out about that anytime. Uh, or Sailor Moon. I've always geeked out about that since like childhood. Pokemon, Digimon. Oh, I love those. Mm -hmm. um, other things that maybe I'm consuming. Uh, if it's a show, it's probably anime. I don't really watch much shows. But in the past, I did. And I liked things like Parks and Rec and 30 Rock. And uh, I watched some Black Mirror. And I've, I have watched all the Game of Thrones. Um, but I also like listening to podcasts a lot. And <laughs> my favorite one right now, it might sound weird, but it's my favorite murder. And no, it's not about people loving murders. <laughs> it's about just like the crazy murders that happen. And remember, I also was in college for criminology. So of course these things interest me, but there's two wonderful women that podcast it and they're amazing and hilarious. Um, and I just, it's, it's like taking a really dark subject, but like making a little bit light of it because those people are crazy and we got to look out for ourselves. So it's actually a hilarious podcast. Um, sometimes I'll dive into Ted talks too. Those are really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, yeah, I, I geek out about phones a lot. I like getting the best phone on the market. I have a Google pixel two right now and I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. I like it a lot. It does seem like it's like the one out there that's kind of like doing like the coolest stuff, I guess with a phone, because I think it's, I forget I had like a economics course back in college that there's a, there's a term for this, but it's like certain things end up just like duplicating each other. That's why like TGI Fridays and Applebee's and Ruby, T it's like, they're all like the same thing. Or like sneakers, <laughs> yeah. like the sneakers are basically the same sneaker. Um, so there's like, it's like an almost deliberate economic sort of theory or concept or, you know, kind of force at play. And I think phones have gotten to that point where like, like they're pretty much all the same. Like the iPhone changed the game. Everybody just is like duplicating and then like tinkering. But then like the Google Pixel um, is very intriguing to me because I know they also have like their own like data network now too that has like a really like they're yeah. kind of changing the way that that can be uh, delivered as well. So I'm very intrigued. So I've had my phone for a while now, just like an iPhone six, and I'm just like like all right. Like I'm at the point too, I guess, where I'm like I'm writing it into the ground, and I probably the next time I'll just be considering just like what's like the best thing that I can do because I think I don't know even the newest iPhone is just like the certain things that they're doing I'm just like why why do I need like an emojis I don't need yeah, that exactly. that's, like that's what you're putting all your like resources Time and mental and energy, energy. it's like, like yeah why? it's just like geez okay um but uh yeah and I mean um because yeah I've, I've like 
I've played pretty much. I guess the only thing now is like Hearthstone, technically. I guess because I yeah I played, you know, Warcraft back in the day, Starcraft, World of Warcraft, and uh, I just got Overwatch uh, over the winter holidays and started playing that and Heroes and yeah, like Blizzard makes some good games. And I, I was mentioning this when somebody like because like, multiple people recommended Overwatch uh, in multiple past podcast episodes, and like I was like, okay, I gotta like check it out. Like it confirmed that, but just like how much kind of their ecosystem like feeds off each other. Like you were saying, like here's the storm being almost kind of like this fan, you know, fan service game where it's like, Oh cool. I can basically have my like, you know, digital action figures of all my favorite yeah. characters just sort of all like, at the same time. yeah. Um, so that is fighting incredible. each other. It's yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, and then like overwatch, they had that like blizzard world or whatever, like the theme park. Oh, like, it was so good. Yeah. They announced that at BlizzCon. I lost my mind. Yeah. It was really cool. But, um, yeah, and I think just that other, like, my favorite murder, too, because, like, that's a very common uh, one that I know a lot of people enjoy so much. Like, I, I'm just usually not into the true crime stuff, but my wife, yeah. she wants <laughs> They it. make it a little more lighthearted because of their reactions to it. They're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. God. It is, like, yeah, if you get outside of just, like, okay, this is, like, objectively an awful thing that happened, but it's, like, it's so weird. Or, like, why did they decide to do that? Or just, like, yeah, yeah just, it's, like, it's, people are crazy. Yeah, abnormal behavior. Um, but. Yeah, all cool stuff. So we'll link out to all that uh, in the show notes. But um, so I guess anything else that, um, you know, just in terms of like things that you're consuming or just things that you can think about of just sort of like the things that you've learned through um, exploring all these different uh, things that you've geeked out about um, before we kind of move on to the the final question, I guess, because I guess we've talked about a lot. I don't know if there's anything else on your mind that you've kind of had an epiphany about of just like a story or an anecdote about something, you know, that you've had through like a connection uh, through Twitch or just uh, anything from your journey, any other morsels that you'd want to share out before we wrap up here. Sure. So I'll talk about, cause I think you had asked like how these things will positively contribute to yes. like, my life and other people's lives. I don't think I answered that one yet. Um, so I would say hmm, before I started streaming, I was, watching a couple other streamers kind of like religiously because I love them and basically there were times where if I was sad or if I was like not happy with where life was at at the moment I would tune into these streams and it would just cheer me up even if it was just for those little moments or like they were playing a game that I've never played before and I wasn't gonna buy it and play it but I wanted to see it and it was usually those are story games because I just really like adventure games and I don't ever have time to play them but I like them so much. So I was watching these other people play them with such commentary and like the hive mind of Twitch is hilarious because to me, it's just like, it's literally just a hive mind on the bigger channels. Mm -hmm. It's like, everybody has to think the same thought. I love it so much. And it's quite entertaining when it's not being toxic. Um, So when I started streaming, I didn't realize that I could be helping other people in those same situations that those streamers helped me. I I don't know. I just didn't put two and two together because I was just, I was just doing this for fun. And then I started getting messages of like, you know, people's personal lives and how just me being there streaming every day helped them. And it, it kind of like floored me because I didn't understand. And I was so, I don't know, it just, it touched me. And then I remembered, oh, wait, I've also had that experience. Why didn't I, why didn't I put two and two together? And so now I, I don't know, I like to think that streaming helps people, even though that's kind of. I don't know if it's like a selfish thing. I was like, oh, I'm streaming to help people. But I stream for fun and it helps people. And I don't know another job. I've, ever, I've had plenty of jobs and I can't think of one that people were so happy to be a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it, I don't know why I overlooked it, but it, I think that's the most positive thing. And it, it contributed to my life too. Because a lot of times when people are asking you those hard questions, like, why are you streaming every day? Why do you care about this? When are you going to get a real job? What are you going to do when you're 40? All these like questions. And it's like, when I'm 40, I'll figure it out. And in the meantime, I'm having a good time doing what I'm doing. And I'm helping others find joy and happiness. And maybe find a small corner in the internet that isn't horrible. Or they get introduced to Twitch. And they find that Twitch is amazing. And they go explore all of Twitch's everything. And it's... That came after <clears throat> after time of yeah. streaming, realizing like the implications, good and bad. But I don't think the good so outweighs the bad because now I do have a great social life. It was it was hard to juggle it at first because I didn't I didn't know how yet. 
But when, when you figure it out, your friends, your true friends become understanding, work around your schedule, understand it. Sometimes you can take breaks from your schedule to go see them on important times. And your family definitely understands and is more than happy for you to stream from their house if it means they get to see you from that weekend and things like that. So it's definitely in time shown just so many positive outlets and I never knew that gaming could do such a thing. And when I'm 40, if Twitch isn't around and if I'm not streaming, I still want to be in a community revolving around maybe games and, you know, impacting life in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, I always appreciate, uh, cause I think Twitch provides a very good platform for it when people do like gaming marathons, you know, or some sort of thing for like, uh, a charity and those sort of things. And just obviously, yeah, providing a, uh, you know, a positive community for people and an outlet. And because, um, yeah, I, I think that's a good way that you put it. And it could even have further implication where some people are just like, oh, I don't have time to play this game, you know, so I'll just watch somebody else play it. You know, it has a nice like social aspect to it. But then like if somebody can't afford to play that game or like, you know, like yeah, obviously they have this like positive community that it's like, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to play this because I can't afford to buy the system or, or the game or whatever. And it's like, hey, that's cool. Like just hang out and like we'll almost like play it together where you're almost like, being like, oh, what should I do here, guys? Or, you know, just like whatever, you know, but they at least get to be a part of it. Um, and I know something that I've uh, kind of thought about and I've written about is that, you know, we're certainly bombarded a lot nowadays with, uh, you know, a lot of advertisements and just like fake things, you know, just like curated social media feeds or, you know, just like fake advertisements and, you know, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, geek communities and certainly uh, Twitch for sure is just, one of those places where I think people can find genuine positive connections with the people who share their interest, where I think there's certainly, it can be hard to do that otherwise. Um, and I know sometimes, yeah, like for, uh, for like Twitch con, you know, or like these like in-person events, you know, people facilitate meetups and that just can, can, you know, cement those communities and the connections that people are making and stuff. So, you know, it really has a, a huge positive impact both online and in person. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great that you've been able to kind of, uh, you know, give back in the way that that community has given to you. Because, um, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, I've just been very impressed. Like, like, again, I always knew that Twitch existed and I was just seeing what it's all about. <laughs> very cool stuff. Um, and, yeah, I mean, they play all sorts of games on there. But then there's also ones where it's like people are playing tabletop games. And then there's also just other very interesting things happening with that platform. It, it is almost, you know, like YouTube obviously has evolved so much to you know, there's scripted series and, you know, people just doing uh, vlogging or whatever, like it's definitely an evolving uh, channel and platform. So um, yeah, if people are curious, I strongly advise you to check it out. It's very cool. Um, so yeah, as we wrap up here, um, I know you are kind of like uh, kind of further committing to, you know, your streaming this year and everything. So I guess just anything with that, with life, the world, you know, stuff that you're optimistic about that you're looking forward to um, just to end everything here on a positive note to uh, wrap up the episode. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to continuing to grow my channel. I now also have a friend that's working on my YouTube and he does amazing work, Ethan Kraft. Um, so he's, he's took over my YouTube and I love it. And every week he comes out with like the most witty, funny little clips of my stuff that I, I could never work on. So I'm hoping that continues to grow. Um, I want to get masters in heroes. I'm diamond right now. I feel like I can do it in 2018. Mm. Um, I don't know. I want to just keep bettering the quality and keep having a great time and maybe find time to play more of those adventure games that I like so much. Um, so I guess I'm just looking forward to how Twitch grows and the more popularity it gets and helping people kind of find their their place, their voice in the world, um, even if it's just through one channel and one game. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the positive changes in the community. I think 2018 is going to be a good year. A lot of 2017 was people um, understanding what open-minded means, and I really think it's going to be implemented pretty well this year. So I'm excited to see how that happens too. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, I think it's something I appreciate that, is a difference than what I've seen because I guess if you almost kind of see it as like a social media thing, like comparing Twitch to some other platforms, like, cause I know you have like people who like moderate the chat in your channel and stuff like that. Like it seems like that, that has been, and I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess like, I don't know if it always has been, uh, but certainly is now something that people are conscious about. Like, yeah, certainly trying to foster more positive communities and certain, certainly holding people accountable if they're not 
upholding those values and being disrespectful either to the other people watching or to the, the streamer themselves and stuff. So, because sure. um, yeah, it's like other ones, it's like they just always have this blanket of just like, well, just free speech, guys. Just like people should be able to say what they want. And just like, cause I think Twitter and other places, like they've had a huge problem with that, you know, just like they just let things be. And only if it's like the entire like, you know, ecosystem kind of dogpiling on like one person, they'll be like, okay, I guess we'll like suspend their account for a little bit or something. And she's <laughs> like, okay, thanks. Yeah. That one person, it was being kind of like rude or whatever. Um, but yeah, I guess just seeing that, like, you know, there's mods, just keeping people accountable and keeping things positive. Cause yeah, if it's just like one bad apple sometimes can ruin things. It's like, again, there's always going to be people like that, but we don't have to give them free speech platform, you know, to like do whatever. It's just like, Hey, let's just collectively decide to like, just not tolerate like assholes. How about we do that? Yeah. Like, you, know, you know, so protect everybody. <laughs> yeah. They're just vocal minorities anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's just like, yeah, that's the frustrating part. Yeah, it's like, it's always not the, like, the majority yeah, of people. Yeah, it's not the majority, <laughs> and it's just yeah. a small little minute that decides to type it, but yeah. then it's fun to see the whole community gather around and be like, you're wrong. Right, Stop yeah. thinking like that. Okay, yeah. bye. Yeah. That kind yeah. of thing. So, um, yeah, and I guess, yeah, it's good to, like, see that kind of thing continue, because I think, uh, yeah, that that's what will continue to diver differentiate something like Twitch, if it's, like, you know, there's moderators who take the job seriously and the community who takes it seriously as well, you know, holding people accountable and um, all that. So uh, that is definitely cool to see. And, yeah, I'm uh, very uh, excited to see what comes uh, in 2018 for you as well. And, um, yeah, all really cool stuff that we talked about. Really appreciate you uh, taking time out for uh, this podcast here. And, uh, yeah, just have a, a good rest of your day. And, again, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me, Dustin. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.